In this video I will be teaching you supervised image classification in Google Earth Engine. If you don't know about image classification basics, I have provided a link for that in video description. We will perform supervised image classification in 10 simple steps. All the code will be made available. I will not discuss any method or function that we will be using in detail. However, if you have any confusions or questions you can write in comments or send an email to me. Details are available in video description. Before we begin I would like to say that I spend hours in making simple and short videos on Google Earth Engine for your understanding. A subscribe to this channel would be massive. Share my videos with friends and in your community. Without further ado, let's begin. The following are the 10 steps that will help us classify the image. Step 1, we will import our study area geometry, you can make a polygon too. Step 2, we will import the dataset, for this tutorial we will be using Sentinel-2 imagery. From the Sentinel-2 image collection we will filter our multi-band image for our study area. If you don't know about filtering an image in Google Earth Engine please watch my video on that. You can also create a custom multi-band image in Google Earth Engine and use that for classification. Please watch my video tutorial on how to create a custom multi-band image in Google Earth Engine. Out of this multi-band image I will be using only 4 bands for classification. To select specific band or bands use the Google Earth Engine select method. Step 3, we have to create a list containing the names of bands of the image. If they are few like 4 or 5 manually create the list by typing. The band names inside the list are strings. From classification perspective these band names are also known as training variables, as these are the variables a machine learning algorithm will be trained on. Nonetheless, if there are many bands, you can use the Google Earth Engine band names method. The band names method requires an image. You just have to write the image dot band names. This method returns a list containing names of bands or training variables. Step 4, we will create land cover classes. For this demo I want the image to be classified into four land cover classes. These land cover classes are vegetation, water, barren, and urban. I will display the Sentinel-2 image on map and zoom it. I will make a true or false composites of the image and by selecting the point geometry tool I create a point geometry on top of the image. Inside the geometry configuration I will type the name of the class. I will select its type as feature collection. The feature collection property attribute will be the same for all four land cover classes. I have written it as LC meaning land cover. You can name the feature collection property any that you like, but make sure it remains the same for all land cover classes. The value of your first land cover class must start from zero. First land cover class will have property name LC and value of zero, second land cover class will have property name LC and value one. Similarly in this manner increment the value of your classes by one from the previous. Finally, we will draw as many points for each land cover class as we like on the entire image. For this demo, just to save time I will be creating 15 points for each class known as sample points. To create a sample point, click wherever that land feature is present on the image. Make sure the sample points are more than 80 for each land cover type uniformly distributed all over the image. Step 5, we will merge the land cover classes feature collection using the Google Earth Engine's dot merge method. Create a new variable by the name merged and write the name of first land cover class and add dot merge and write the name of second class inside the method and so on. Make sure to merge all of your land cover classes.
Step 6, we will sample our multi-band image using the merged feature collection. Use the Google Earth Engine Sample Regions method. To learn this method please watch my video on how to sample an image in Google Earth Engine. Link to that available in video description. Using this method, Google Earth Engine has sampled the multi-bands of the image at all the points of land cover classes. When printed we can see on console that all the feature collections that we drew will have new properties of band names and their corresponding spectral value. Step 7, we will split these sampled feature collections or sample points for classification. 70% of this data will be used for training the classification algorithm. 30% will be used for accuracy assessment. We will split this data using the Google Earth Engine's random column method. We will filter this random column as 0.7 for classification and 0.3 for accuracy assessment. 0.7 means 70% or 70 divided by 100. Similarly, 0.3 means 30%. If you don't know how to filter a feature collection in Google Earth Engine, please watch my video on that. Step 8, I have selected the random forest machine learning algorithm for the image classification. I will not discuss this algorithm here. I have decided to use 50 decision trees for this classifier. I will train this random forest algorithm or classifier using the 70% training samples. The class property is going to be LC as a string. The input properties are going to be the list of band names. Step 9. We will classify the image using the random forest classifier. The classify method default output mode is set to classification, however we can also set it to regression. I will make some other tutorial on regression in Google Earth Engine. The classify method will return the classified image. I will add it to map and give the visualization parameters. Remember when we assigned the value of 0 to our first land cover class, this is where that will prove useful. Inside the visualization parameters give the min value of 0 and max value of 3 as there were total of 4 land cover classes. The value 0 is also a land cover class, so never get confused by that. Since the classified image has a single band of classification I will provide it a color palette. Select four different colors. Land cover class 0 will have the first color from the palette and so on. Step 10, finally. We will perform the accuracy assessment of the classification using the error or confusion matrix. For that we will use the 30% validation samples. This time we will create a new variable classified one and classify the 30% validation samples. Let me repeat, the 30% validation samples. You can use actual ground truth table of land cover classes here too as validation samples rather using the 30% split data. From this classified validation samples we will create an error matrix. The actual argument is going to be the LC property name, and the predicted is going to be classification. From this error matrix we can compute user's accuracy, producer's accuracy and kappa value. Accuracy of classification depends of lots of factors like how good was the training data, what training variables were used, how the classification algorithm was tuned, what classification algorithm was tuned etc. You can also compute area of each land cover class. Watch my video tutorial on how to compute pixel area in Google Earth Engine. If you learned something please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I know you will have lots of queries regarding this tutorial so make sure to drop them in comments. Code link given in video description. This was rather a long video on Google Earth Engine. I will see you in the next one, until then. Peace.